Hebrews chapter number 11 is where we have been studying on Sunday nights this year. And we are coming down to the last couple sermons in this series. And the one thing that we've seen time and time and time again is simply this. That without faith it is impossible to please God. Without faith it is impossible to please Him. And as we've gone through this chapter 11 of Hebrews, we have seen that a right relationship with God comes only through faith. We saw Abel, and Abel taught us that if we're going to worship, we need to worship by faith. And Enoch, he taught us that if we're going to walk, we've got to walk by faith. And Noah taught us that if we're going to work, then we better work by faith. We've looked at men like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We looked at Amram and Jochebed. We've looked at Moses and others. And we have seen person after person, precept after precept, pattern after pattern that reminds us of the singular truth that we as children of God are to walk by faith and not by sight. If there's nothing else that we take away from Hebrews chapter 11, if we don't remember Abel or Enoch or Noah or Abraham or Amram and Jochebed, remember this, that without faith it is impossible to please God. It is impossible. And the writer here of Hebrews, he begins to kind of turn the corner. On the chapter. He begins to kind of turn the corner on this section. And what he does is he begins to zoom out. We have looked at individual after individual after individual in great detail and depth. And now he's going to kind of begin to zoom out a little bit. Tonight we're going to look at the nation of Israel as a whole and their journey as they entered into the promised land. Uh, Next week we're going to look at really just a laundry list of names and, and a whole mass of people who were not even named. And so the writer here begins to zoom out and he begins to move from the individuals and their own situations to the body of Christ and our corporate application. And what we see is we begin to see and we begin to see drawn some of the great blessings of faith. And So tonight, let's look at these three verses if we could. And learn three truths. Verse 29 reminds us this. By faith, they. That they is the children of Israel. The children of Israel who who came out of Egypt after the Passover night. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. Which the Egyptians, a saying to do, were drowned. You know one of the blessings of faith? One of the blessings for those who walk by faith and not by sight is simply this, Roman numeral one, that faith is always advancing us. That faith is always advancing us. Faith is moving us forward in our journey. We see here the children of Israel had left Egypt, but Egypt came after them. And you'll remember back to Exodus chapter number 14. It's a pretty tense scene. I mean, the children of Israel, the Bible said, had come out of Egypt with a high hand. That means they came out on top. They came out not not slinking away in the night, but singing and rejoicing and boasting in all that God had done. We see the Egyptians had lavished gifts upon them and more or less said, take all of our gold and take all of our jewels, take all of our stuff and get out of here. And so the nation of Israel came out with a high hand. And behind them, no doubt, they could still hear the shrieks and the mourns from the houses of the Egyptians as they mourned those dead loved ones from that Passover night. But it didn't take long for Pharaoh to realize he didn't want to let the nation of Israel go. 
And so the Bible tells us that Egypt came chasing behind them. And so the children of Israel are moving towards the promised land. They come to the Red Sea in front of them. They have the armies of Egypt chasing behind them. And we see this scene, Exodus chapter 14, beginning in verse 10. The Bible says this, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lift up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Oh, there was nowhere to go. There was nowhere to turn. In their mind, they could choose to drown in front of them or be slaughtered from what was coming behind them. The simple truth is this. Faith ain't always easy. Amen? Amen. In fact, the life of faith is rarely easy. Faith ain't always easy and it isn't always fun. Sometimes, and I'll just be transparent, sometimes you just kind of want to curl up in the corner in the fetal position and cry a little bit, and hope nobody sees. You know, sometimes in life, and we talked about it this morning, sometimes there are just some frightful sights. But you know what? Though our flesh wants to curl up in the corner, though our flesh wants to cry, and though our flesh wants to say, woe is me, and this is never going to work, and it's all just going to fall apart, and it's all so terrible, you know what? Faith doesn't leave us there. You know why? Because one of the great blessings of faith is that faith advances us. Faith takes steps forward. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, Paul wrote in 2 Timothy, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And faith, in spite of the frightful sights, is willing to take forward steps. Now, this is a really funny scenario to me. And, and, and there's, there's almost a little bit of humor behind it. You look how it develops. Exodus 14, beginning in verse 13. Moses rises up and says unto the people, Now, I love Moses, okay? Moses says, Fear ye not! Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you this day. For the Egyptians, which he hath seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. And all God's people said, Amen. And they're getting fired up. And Moses is all, he's rising up and he's encouraging the people. But I want you to notice where it goes from here. Look at verse 14. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. So Moses more or less tells them, you stand there, God's going to fight, shut your mouth, he's going to take care of you. Look at verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, why criest thou unto me? So you know in essence what happened? <laughs> Moses got up before all the people and he said, I want you to know God's going to fight for you. And I want you to know God's going to deliver you. And I want you to know you just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And these nasty Egyptians, you're not going to see them anymore after today. And he said it to other people. And then apparently he went and said, Lord, Lord, how are we going to get out of this? God, what are we going to do? And God looked at Moses and said, Wherefore criest thou to me? Speak unto the children that they go forward. By the way, this is a great reminder that the leaders don't always got it figured out. There has been more than one time in the last two and a half years where I have known the right answer by faith but it didn't seem possible by sight. It didn't. There was one time way back in the day before the Kaufmans came when I was having a conversation with people and they were asking me, what in the world are we going to do? We don't have an assistant pastor. Our, our daycare director is retiring. Mr. Brown's, re we don't, everybody's leaving. What are we going to do? And at that time, we had no real options out there. And I stood up in that moment and I said, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to trust God, amen, because he's never let us down before and he'll not let us down here. And in, the, in my heart, I was going, God, <laughs> God, what are we going to do? And that comforts me to see Moses there. You know what? Leaders don't always have it figured out. 
But you know what faith always does? Faith always keeps us moving forward. And the Bible says that Moses lifted his staff and the wind came and those waters parted and the children of Israel walked across on dry ground. There was nowhere to go but forward and faith moved them forward. I'm going to tell you one of the blessings of faith. One of the blessings of faith is that it will move you forward give you the ability to face the difficulties before you, give you the ability to face the dangers behind you, and step forward. You know something faith doesn't do? Faith doesn't turn back. Faith moves forward. You know the reality for us as Christians? We can't go back. There's nothing to go back to. When you think of where we were and what Jesus brought us from, faith doesn't go back. You know, there there is no other sacrifice for us. If we go back, there is no other start for us. I want you to see in Hebrews chapter 6, and I want to kind of expound this a little bit over the next two minutes or so. But look at what the writer says here. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ... Let us go on to perfection. In other words, having established those basic principles of who Jesus was and what Jesus did, let's move forward to maturity. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Jump to verse number 4 if you would. For it is impossible... For those who were once enlightened and haven't tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew to themselves again into repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put Him to open shame. Now there's a lot of verbiage and wordiness here, so let me kind of break down basically what the writer of Hebrews is saying. He's saying it is impossible for us who are of the household of faith to go back and start over. Meaning, if we go back, there is no other sacrifice. There's no other foundation that we can lay. There's no other sacrifice that we can uh, gather unto ourselves. There's nothing back there for us. The only direction we can move is forward. I think maybe this illustration will help a little bit. I have the wonderful privilege of teaching Spanish one here at the Harvest Temple Christian Academy. Bienvenidos. I think that's right. No, I'm just kidding. So, one of the things that students have to understand is we've started the school year. We've had homework grades. We've had quiz grades. We've had a test grade now. Super fun. You know, the reality for those students is there's no going back. You know what? They may regret not really laying the foundation like they wish they had. They may regret having not really matured or grown in the material as they wish they had. But you know what? It doesn't matter because there's no going back. They, They can't go back to the start of the year. They can't go back and redo those tests and quizzes. What's done is done. The only direction they have to move is forward. And so the writer of Hebrews looks at these Christians and says, you know what? You're not what you ought to be. In the previous chapters, he talked about how at this point they ought to have been teachers and they were still babes in Christ. But you know what? You can't go back. Faith doesn't go back. There is nothing back here. Let's move forward. And one of the great blessings of faith is that faith always advances us. Christian, when there's nowhere else to go, go forward. Go forward. Roman numeral one, we see a blessing of faith. Faith is always advancing us. 
Roman number two, look at verse number 30. The Bible says, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. Number, number one, we saw faith is always advancing us. Number two, one of the blessings of faith is faith is always assuring us. Faith is always assuring or strengthening us. You know, there is steady strength that comes from faith. When Israel finally reached Canaan, they faced Jericho. And if you know much about the Old Testament account of Jericho, it was right there at the entrance to the Promised Land, and it was this heavily walled, heavily fortified city, a seemingly insurmountable, a seemingly impossible obstacle to try to get around, to get across or conquer. But you read what Israel did. Now, if it were up to me, we, we may have gathered some slingshots. You know, we could have shot them down from up that wall. Pew. May have got some slingshots or some catapults. Bring them down to us. If it were up to me, we may have dug some trenches. I mean, dug some trenches and, and, and built some things. Maybe tried to tunnel under the city. That would be cool. Pop up and... Attack them all. If it were up to me, I, I don't know, maybe we would have surrounded them, we would have sieged them. Nothing in, nothing out, starved them out. That would work. But you know, that's not what they did, is it? What does the Bible say that the children of Israel did at Jericho? They marched around the city. For six days... They marched around the city one time. Just marched. Day two. Day three. Day four, I'm like, seriously, Joshua? Seriously? Because you had to know as they marched, do you think the inhabitants and the soldiers and the sentries of Jericho just looked at them? Oh no, I'm sure they mocked them. I'm sure they harassed them. I'm sure they did all sorts of things to them to try to provoke them. Yet for six days, they marched. Once around. Then on the seventh day, they got to do it seven times. And they marched seven times. What, what kept them going? When they woke up day four and Joshua said, All right, boys, get in line. We're going to go marching. What helped them to get up and get in line? On day six, when Joshua said, We're going to do it again. On day seven, when Joshua said, When we get around that last time, we're all going to blow our horns and shout and all sorts of stuff. What? I, I don't know about you, but if I'm one of those soldiers and I marked around the seventh time, I don't know that I'm going to be the first one to, to shout. I mean, sometimes it's just easier if somebody else does it first. It's easy to be the second, amen, amen. Yeah, okay. Do you know what allowed the children of Israel to march around Jericho the way they did? Faith. Faith. Because in faith, there is steady strength. Because faith recognizes this. If I want God's results, I have to do it God's way. That if I want God's results, if I want God's results in my marriage, I've got to do my marriage God's way. When it doesn't make any sense, when I feel unappreciated, when I feel taken advantage of, when other people give me a, a other advice, I understand, faith understands, faith strengthens me to say, if I want God's results, I've got to do it God's way. Period. And that's true for our families, that's true for our ministry, it's true for our finances, it's true for our career, it's true for our whole life. i got to do it God's way. 
I've got to do it God's way. And faith is what gives us the assurance and the strength for complete obedience. If they had not walked around the walls for seven days, if they had not done it 100% God's way, they would not have gotten God's result. And so faith assures us, gives us steady strength for complete obedience. And understand this assurance comes not only from a steady strength, but also from a sure source. Faith is not unreasonable. It is based on a premise more sure than anything this world has. Where did Joshua come up with this crazy idea to march around the city? Where'd that happen? Where'd he get that from? God told him. He had one of those crazy visions like Frank had this morning. God told him. And so Joshua's source was not the art of war. Joshua's source for this plan was, was not by looking over what the Egyptians had done or, or looking at what had worked in those few battles they had as they marched through the wilderness. Joshua's source was God's word. You see, the natural man has his experience. And the natural man has his reason and his logic. But we, we rest on the precious, inspired, perfect, pure, preserved Word of God. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a source that will not fail you. Peter wrote this in his epistle. 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 16, he says, We have not followed cunningly devised fables when we have made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice came, which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. And so Peter here begins to relate an experience that he has had there on the Mount of Transfiguration with the Lord. But here in verse 19 he says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye should take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, unto the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. But for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Peter said, I'll tell you what, I'll stack up my experience on the Mount of Transfiguration where I saw Jesus Christ glorified and I heard the voice of God come from the heavens. He said, what an experience that was. But on the other hand, we have a more sure word Word of prophecy than even the experience that I have. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the source that will never fail you. Amen. And so faith gives us assurance. Never forget that we do not oppose the devil's devices with human devices. For the weapons of our warfare, the Bible says in 2, Timothy chapter, or, or 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, are not carnal. They're not fleshly. They are not of this world, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Faith goes beyond the natural to the supernatural. And therein is much assurance. So the blessings of faith. Faith is always advancing us. When you don't know where else to go, go forward. Go forward by faith. Faith is always assuring us. But I want you to see verse 31. It says, By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. 
What an unlikely person to make the list. I mean, you think about it, we've been, we've been more or less talking about a good Jewish man and um, one good Jewish lady. And, and so we've been talking about the heroes of the, the, the Jewish faith and the Jewish lineage, whether it was Abel or, or, or Noah or Enoch or Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Amram, Jochebed, Moses, Joshua, the children of Israel. It's all a bit about Israel, 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 Israel. And that makes sense because Hebrew was written to Jewish people who had believed in Christ. And so it makes sense. And then all of a sudden, verse number 31, we find Rahab. Now I tell you, she just doesn't quite seem to fit to me. What an unlikely person to make the list. A Canaanite woman who lived her life in gross sin. In gross sin. I mean, after all, she wasn't just Rahab. She was known for one thing and it won't good. And yet the Holy Spirit put this heathen, Gentile harlot on the list. I thought to myself, why in the world? You know what I think it is? I think because it proves, you know, we, we have seen some amazing things, have we not? I mean, you think of what God did through Abel and what God did through Enoch and what God did through Noah and what God did through Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And you think about the impossible things that they were able to overcome and, and the seemingly impossible circumstances they were able to see through and, and the impossible promises that they were able to believe. And you think, wow, these great men of faith and these great women of faith, how could I ever relate to them? Then you come to Rahab. And you know what you find about faith? That not only is it always advancing us, not only is it always assuring us, but I don't care who you are, it is always available to us. You think about Rahab. You know what you realize? That she was saved by grace through faith like anybody else. We know the verse, Ephesians 2, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. Lest any man should boast. We know the verse, Romans 10 and verse number 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you know what it reminds us? That whenever we think there's a reason why we can't. Why we can't move forward. Why we can't stay strong. Why we can't stay settled on the Word of God. Do you know what it reminds us? It reminds us that whenever we think we can't, we have bought into just some lame excuse. If anybody had an excuse, it was Rahab. Do you know what Rahab knew about God? Not much. Not much. She said, we, we've heard report that you're God let you beat up on some other countries. That was pretty much her extent. She knew nothing of the Passover and of the temple and of the sacrifice. She didn't know the Ten Commandments. She didn't know the, 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 the way that the priesthood worked. And, and she didn't know about the Day of Atonement. And she didn't know about Abraham and Isaac. And uh, She knew that their God had done some great things. And there are a lot of Christians that say, you know what, I, I wish I had more faith, but I, I guess I just don't know enough about the Bible. Hogwash. You just need faith. Rahab didn't start with much. But by faith, she did what? She moved forward. By faith, she did what? She stayed steady. 
You, you, you say, I, I don't know much about the Bible. I just, this is a big one. Well, well preacher, you, you just don't know what sin I have in my life. No, but I know what sin Rahab had in her life. None of you have that nickname to my knowledge. I'm just saying. As far as I know, none of you are known by that profession. If you are, I, I don't know that I really want to know, okay? But. Well, preacher, you just, you don't know how much I've sinned. Well, preacher, you just, you don't understand my family and my friends. Well, what would they think? I'm going to tell you what, there is no barrier to faith in your life that Rahab did not experience greater. There is no barrier to faith in your life that Rahab did not have a greater barrier in front of her. And yet she took what she had and she lived by faith. Faith is always available to us. No more lame excuses. You can walk by faith. You can. No more lame excuses. I want you to see this too. There's no limit to the extent. Not only was Rahab saved by grace, through faith like anyone else, she was saved unto good works like every other believer. So God took this heathen harlot and so transformed her life that you know what? We see her again. We see her in the New Testament. Do you know where we see Rahab in the New Testament? In the lineage of Jesus Christ Himself. Matthew chapter number 1, verses 5 and 6 tell us this, And Salmon begat Boaz of Rahab. You remember Boaz of Ruth? You know, Boaz and Ruth. Rahab was Boaz's mama. And Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse. And Jesse begat David the king. And you follow Matthew chapter 1 to the end, and you find Jesus Christ. And so God took this heathen harlot that didn't know much about anything, but just decided that, that she knew enough that she was going to live by faith. And God took this woman, and so transformed her life that she came to not only find a home among God's people, but came to hold a place in the royal line of Jesus Christ Himself. And if God can use that woman with all of her past and with all of her seemingly ignorance and all of the things that were working against her, if God can use her and God can use her faith, then God can use me and God can use you. There is no limit to the extent of what God can do with somebody who's living by faith. And one of the great blessings of faith is that it puts us in a position to have our lives used by God in ways we never dreamed possible. Faith is available to us. But you know, as we look through this, there's something missing, isn't there? You know, we saw the Passover, verse 28, and we saw the Exodus in verse 29, and we saw Jericho in verse number 30, and Rahab in verse 31. But you know, there's a long time between the Exodus, the Red Sea, and Jericho. Forty years, give or take. Let me ask you, where are those 40 years? Where are they? I mean, there was a lot that happened. We have books of the Bible that are filled with that, don't we? But where are they here? They're not. Do you know why? Because they weren't of faith. Because they weren't of faith. And so... Those 40 years, the wandering, 
the trials, the troubles, the tribulations, the lives that came and went are nowhere to be found because they were not of faith. You know what? That reminds us of this. We talk about the blessings of faith. But let's not ever talk about it like it's an option. Like it's one of those nice things that we could take advantage of if we so choose, like the leather interior of a car. You know what? I think I'll opt for that this time. No, no, no. If it's not of faith, it is wandering, it is waste. Don't waste your life. You can't move forward unless it's by faith. The children of Israel move forward by faith. Hey, did you notice the end of verse number 29? Who else tried to move forward as well? The Egyptians. Oh, put verse 29 back up there if you would, Brother Charles. Not only did the children of Israel by faith cross the Red Sea, the Egyptians are saved to do as well. If Israel can do it, so can we. No, you can't. Because it's not a faith. You cannot truly move forward in your Christian life except by faith. You cannot truly sustain and truly have that strength to fully surrender, obey, unless it's by faith. Don't wander through your life. Don't waste your life. Without faith, it is... Don't miss the blessings of faith. Could we stand together tonight with our heads bowed and eyes closed?